Homeschooling takes just a fraction of the time that conventional schooling does. My name is Allison Morrow and I'm the founder of goodschooling.net. And in this video, we're going to talk about roughly how long homeschooling takes on a regular day to day basis. And then also look at some of the reasons why homeschooling takes so much less time. So the main question that you're asking, how long should I expect to be tied up in this homeschooling thing every day, right? Well, there are two things that are going to influence that answer. The first is obviously your child's age and level of development. And the second is the methodology that you've chosen to align with. Now, if you're not sure what I'm talking about when I talk about methodology, I've got another video that I will link to so you can go check that out if um, you're not quite sure what that is. But when we talk about a child's level of development and their age, we need to remember that first of all, children are not wired to even learn with formal methods of education, things like workbooks and textbooks and sitting down with a pencil at a table and filling out you know, little blanks and, and listening to lectures, all that kind of stuff. That doesn't really start to be applicable to them until around age seven. So if you have kids younger than seven, then homeschooling, there's kind of two ways to look at it. You could say on the one hand that it should take less than an hour and that would be less than an hour over the course of the whole day that you are directly trying to teach them something academic. So they're counting or their letters, things like that. Okay. Another way you can look at it is that before age seven, everything you do with your child is education. And technically that's true. Like as they continue to grow up, right? We're always teaching our kids all day long. Our kids are learning, but with little children, the whole world, everything is so new. They are learning all the time. And so another way to look at it is that you can be teaching your kids all day long. You don't just have to be teaching academic stuff for it to be educational, right? But in terms of the actual uh, academic type stuff, once you hit about age seven, then for the elementary years, so like first grade through eh, fifth grade ish, um, it would typically take somewhere between an hour and maybe like an hour, two and a half hours. Okay. So an hour at the beginning in first grade. And by the time they're in fifth grade, you're starting to get closer to two hours and kind of by the end of that year, probably closer to two and a half. Now, when they transition into middle school, then it's going to look a little more like maybe two and a half to three hours in the beginning to about four hours by the time they're in eighth grade. Not a huge uh, difference over the course of those years. And then once they get into high school, um, a lot really depends on what they're going to be doing after they graduate, what they're going to be doing, you know, if they're going to college, if they're going to trade school, if they're launching a business, whatever it is that they're doing. But even so, homeschooling usually doesn't take more than four to maybe six hours. Six hours would be like if they're taking AP or dual credit classes, um, if they are working really hard towards maybe graduating early. Uh, whereas if they don't have those kind of plans, it's going to be more like four to five hours. So typically when they go to brick and mortar conventional school, that's going to take anywhere from seven to eight and a half hours of classroom time and the time that they spend, you know, maybe doing after school stuff or even just getting there, right? Getting there and back on the bus, stuff like that. But once they're in school, there are three reasons why it takes so much longer well, actually, there's a whole lot more than three, but we'll talk about three. Three reasons why it takes so long for conventional school every single day. The first reason is because you've got one teacher trying to teach a whole bunch of people, right? When I was a classroom teacher, I used to teach middle and elementary school. I can tell you that it would sometimes take me forever to get through a lesson that really should not have taken that long because I had 25 or 30 kids asking me questions, needing clarification, not understanding something, not listening to something. And so when you're homeschooling and you're working with your child one on one, or even if you have multiple kids and you're working with them, you know, one on three, 
it takes so much less time to make sure everybody knows what you're talking about and to make sure that everybody understands. And that means you can move on a lot faster. The other reason why it takes so much longer in conventional school is because, unfortunately, our schools have come very far away from developmentally appropriate education. Here is a perfect example. Kids now are expected to know basic reading skills by the time they start kindergarten, okay? Um, I did kindergarten in like 1981. We were not expected to know a thing, right? Those of you who are like in your 40s like I am, you remember that um, kindergarten used to be about play, right? That's developmentally appropriate education right there. Expecting kids to be able to read, okay, reading is a formal academic skill. Most kids before age seven have not unlocked all of the developmental milestones that they need to unlock in order for reading to actually happen. Some kids can, some kids get some of them unlocked. And so you'll see them be able to maybe start reading, you know, three letter words or recognizing their letters, things like that. But then they kind of hit a wall and you're like, ah, we were, we were going so well. Why, why are they suddenly not able to get this skill? Well, it's because there are so many things that need to happen in the brain before a child is able to read. And yet the public schools expect that a child by the end of kindergarten can basically read. It's insane. It makes absolutely no logical sense to think that children that young should be able to master a skill that difficult that requires that many developmental milestones. And yet they do. And because they're expecting these kids to be able to learn these skills, they have to use a ridiculous amount of time to teach them because it takes so long for it to sink in because they're not ready. Everything takes less time to learn the older you are. And so if you wait until it's developmentally appropriate for your child to learn a particular skill, it's going to sink in so much faster and you're going to be able to spend way less time working on it. So as homeschoolers, we're able to track our child's education and their development and make sure that they are in line with each other. And when we get to a point where we're like, gosh, this skill did not seem that hard, but my child is just not getting it. We have the freedom to say, and we're going to stop working on it then. Because I bet in six months, if we try this again, you'll get it just like that. And so rather than us taking five hours over the course of the week to try to drill this skill into your brain, we're not even going to try. We're going to leave it alone until next semester. And we'll come back in a few months and we'll try it then. So rather than having to take a whole bunch of time, we can take a little bit of time when they're developmentally ready. The third reason why conventional school can take so much more time is because the teacher does not just get to teach, right? She has to do all sorts of uh, administrative stuff. She's taking attendance. She's tracking down late homework. She's collecting homework. She's passing back homework. She's talking about announcements. She's collecting field trip money. She is dealing with all of these other things that you have to do when you're a classroom teacher, whether, whether you're teaching um, you know, the same kids all day in elementary or just teaching them for 45 minutes in a middle school. The other reason is because she has to deal with so many behavioral issues. And it's not that all the kids are bouncing off the wall all the time, right? But all it takes is one kid in that class to derail things, to make the teacher have to stop, have to deal with this. And every time you stop, it derails everything. Everybody gets discombobulated. And then you have to gather all these squirrels, all these cats back. Everybody come back, come back, come back. We're not done yet. Focus, focus, focus. And not only that, but there are so many transitions. And every time you have to transition, your brain has to shut down and then power back up in a completely different mode. And so when you're teaching in a conventional classroom, you have transitions all day long, transitioning into the classroom, getting everybody ready. Okay, are we ready to think? Okay, let's, let's do all of this administrative stuff that takes like 15 minutes at the beginning of the day. And then we get to spend 30 minutes on math and then we have to transition again because now we have to go to music. So they transition to music and then they come back. Now, hold on, everyone transition out of music phase. Now we have to do some reading. Transition after transition after transition. And that time builds up. But as homeschoolers, we can minimize those transitions by grouping the subjects together that we teach. We do not have to separate everything out. You could teach four, sec four um, subjects all in one lesson if you want to, and you get so much more done, you get so much more covered in a much shorter amount of time. Um, 
And the last reason why homeschooling can take so much less time is because we get to follow different methodologies. We don't have to follow the conventional methodology that says, take time to do a lecture, take time to answer questions, take time to assign some practice problems, take time to check those, take time to assign homework, take time to grade the homework, take time to do a quiz and a test. And a we don't have to do all of this stuff. All that stuff is not necessary for an education. We get to follow all sorts of different methodologies, whichever one suits our, um, our own priorities and our personal thoughts and values and opinions when it comes to education. And some of those, depending on which one you choose, the approach that you take may be one that has very short lessons, that groups things together so you're covering lots of stuff all in one go, um, that allows you to focus tightly on one thing get it done, and then be done for the day. You could be done with school in an hour. So a lot of things, right, are going to feed into why homeschooling takes so much less time. But the main things you're looking at are your child's age and what methodology you choose to align with. So if you are looking at starting your own homeschool adventure soon and you're trying to figure out, well, what am I looking at here? Then hopefully that kind of gives you a general guide and a general understanding of why you're going to be able to flex and find uh, you know, different approaches that suit whatever time you have to homeschool your kids. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got value from this. If you did, please uh, hit that subscribe button and make sure you get the notifications so that you can continue to learn all about the different ways that good schooling can help you on your homeschool adventure. I'll talk to you all later. Take care. Bye.